Many people ask me, how did the world's largest jet engine company end up in Cincinnati, Ohio? And actually, this is a fantastic 70 plus year history. Our origins are actually a company called Wright Aeronautical. Wright Aeronautical in 1940 was among the world's largest producer of piston engines. And with the unrest growing around the world at the very onset of World War II, there was a concern in the United States is are we industrializing our country to prepare for a potential conflict? That led Wright Aeronautical to commit to the United States that it would produce at least 2,000 piston engines a month to support the Allied war effort. Now remember, this is 1940. The United States had not entered the war yet. And Airy was going to be selected between the Rocky Mountains and the Appalachian Mountains to produce these engines at a very large site. And Cincinnati, Ohio was selected. It was based on the fact that there was a tremendous machine tool industry in Cincinnati already at that time. We were among the largest producers of machine tools. So the labor pool in Cincinnati was extremely attractive. It was also just a one hour drive from the young Wright Field in Dayton, Ohio, where the U.S. Army Air Corps was located. Perfect location, and in July 1940, it was announced in Cincinnati, Ohio, that this massive site would be produced. When you look at the Evendale plant today, the yellow buildings are part of the original Wright Aeronautical factory complex. This is where these fantastic piston engines were built that powered B-17s and later B-29s. At one time, at the height of World War II, Wright Aeronautical had more than 30,000 people working at these sites on this complex, more than 35 acres of factory space on a size of more than 300 acres for this complex. Very, very unique design. What we call today Building 700 was the single largest story building in the world. We had one of the largest foundries in the world. More than 30,000 people here working, producing these engines. By 1945, as the war comes to an end, the factory has about 25,000 people working here. And when the final surrender was signed by the Japanese, 25,000 people were taken off the payroll within a couple of weeks. And these mammoth buildings, these monster buildings out here north of Cincinnati were largely barren for several years. That would change in 1948 when GE's fledgling new engine business established in Lynn, Massachusetts, was then looking for additional manufacturing space because the very first jet engines that GE built in those days, in the early 1940s, we had ended up turning the drawings over to some automotive manufacturer to actually do the production of the engines. And GE said, by 1948, we can't let this happen anymore. So they took over these sites here in Evendale. There were seven men that came from Lynn, Massachusetts in the summer of 1948 to establish the operations here. And they did it principally so they could build one engine. It was called the J-47, and it was to power both bombers and fighters for the U.S. Then in 1950, the Korean War breaks out, and everything changes at this facility. It goes from 1,500 people very quickly to about 8,000 people, producing the J-47, which would become the world's most produced jet engine. It was built both here in Lynn and at two automotive companies. And this is really what establishes GE permanently in Cincinnati at these sites. And from there we would grow as both a military business and a commercial business. What is really exciting about the facility today is there are very few fully functional World War II buildings left in America. Not only do we have a fully functioning complex here with these World War II era buildings, but some of the most advanced technologies in the world are being developed and produced in them. For example, in Building 700, today GE has arguably the most advanced ceramic matrix composite laboratory in the world. That is actually in the same building that was built to produce piston engines for World War II. So from a ribbon cutting by Orville Wright at these buildings in 1941, to today, you have a spectacular history at this Evendale site that will be continued on for many, many decades.